Welcome design students. In this project we're going to create this simple crate that we might use for a video game prop. And the purpose of this lesson is for you to reinforce your skills in UVW mapping and texturing. The modeling is very simple and straightforward, so let's get right to it. So to create this box model we're going to start with a box and we're going to create it sort of in this general area. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect because we're going to go to the Modify tab and in here we're going to enter 50, 50, and 50. And I'm pushing Tab to move from space to space like so. Tab, Tab. And then we're going to right click and convert this to an editable poly. This is a little bit different. Um, we've been uh, putting uh, edit poly modifier on it, but this time we're just going to start here. And let's get the move tool and make sure that it's centered in the X and Y coordinates so that it's centered on the world. And we're going to use uh, two copies of this box, so let's go ahead and move, uh, hold down shift and move one over to create a copy. Make sure it's a copy and click OK. And then let's select the first one. And what we're going to do is create that outer frame for the box. So let's go to polygon mode. So let's switch to polygon mode and select one side. And then we're going to right click. And when we right click, we bring up the quad menu. And the quad menu has shortcuts to some tools that are over here as well. We're going to use inset. And we're going to bring up the inset options. And then we're going to drag this up to inset I think maybe about 4.5. So let's type in 4.5. And then we can click check. And then what we're going to do is create the hole that will be in the bottom of the box. And it's very simple to do that. You simply hold down shift and move in the Z direction to extrude down. And as you go through the other side, you create a hole. It's very cool. It's called Smart Extrusion. It's a new feature in 3D Max. And now let's do the same for this side. We're going to right click and bring up the inset options. And as you can see, it just repeats what we did last time. So all we have to do is click check. And then we're going to hold down shift and extrude in the Y direction all the way through to the other side. And then we're going to select the final side. Right click, bring up the inset options, check, and this time we're going to hold down shift and extrude all the way through in the x axis. And now we've created uh, the frame for our box. So let's exit polygon mode, and then we're going to take this box and move it back in the center. And we're going to make sure it's centered, so we're going to zero out the x axis here just by right clicking on that spinner. And then we want to make this smaller. We want to make it about this small. So let's get the scale tool and make sure that we are in the corner here, not here, here. And we're going to click and drag until it's just right in there, just like that. Now we need to recenter it. So I'm going to go to the front view and move it in the center. And now in my perspective view here, I'm going to go ahead and click Default Shading and turn on Edged Faces so we can see a little better. And as you can see here now, we have the frame around the box. Now it's very important that we use these other views here because we're going to line up some things. So now we're going to create that little cross piece that goes diagonally across each face. So I'm going to go to Create. I'm going to select Box. And in the top viewport, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to click right here. And I'm going to drag out just exactly that width, and then I'm going to watch it in the uh, front viewport, and I can see how thick I'm making it here. I'm going to make it about like that, and then I'm going to click, and I'm going to click and stop. I'm going to right-click to turn off creation mode, and then I'm going to right-click and convert this to an edible poly. And then we're going to go to vertex mode. I'm going to take these vertices and drag them in the y-axis this way. I'm going to take these and drag them in the y-axis this way. And that's fine. 
and it's perfectly where it's supposed to be on this axis. Now I want to make a copy and put it on the top. So I'm going to exit uh, sub-object mode here. And I'm going to hold down shift and drag a copy up to the top and set it right on top, just like that. And click OK. And now we're going to create uh, two more pieces for each side, and we're going to have to create mm, four more. So let's start here in the uh, top viewport. And let's get the rotate tool and turn on angle snaps. And then we're going to hold down shift and rotate in this axis here exactly 90 degrees. And you can see the number right above your rotation in yellow. And we're going to make it a copy. And we're going to get the move tool. And we're going to move it over here and line it up just like so. Now I need to check the front view, and I know I need to pull it down so that it's lined up just like that. You can see that lined it up perfectly. Let's check it in the perspective view. It looks like it needs to come up a little bit. And then to create the one for the other side, all we need to do is in the front view, just hold down shift and drag in the x-axis and drop it, line it up right there with that face right there. Now we need to do the same thing for these. So in the front viewport, make sure you have this selected right here. Get the rotate tool, make sure angle snaps is turned on and we're going to hold down shift and rotate in the axis here exactly 90 degrees. And click OK. And then we're going to get the Move tool and move this here. And then in the top view, move it here. And then to finish, we need to move one over to the other side. So we're going to hold down Shift and in the top view, drag in the Y axis and line it up just like that. And click OK. And there now we have our box all set up. I actually don't think I like the way these are. I think they should be facing the other way. So I'm going to select it and get my rotate tool and rotate them 180 degrees so that they're going to do the same with this one. For some reason, that just didn't look right to me. And actually, I think I'm going to rotate this one to 180. And this one. I promise I have a reason for doing this. What I'm looking for is a triangle here and on the other side as well, here, so that they meet. in the bottoms and the tops before they were not meeting like that. So make sure yours look like that. They should meet. Each one should meet at the bottom and the top. It should kind of go around the sides in a zigzag. Okay, so that's it for the modeling. In the next video, we'll create materials and then we'll begin UV mapping. And I'll see you then.